Everyone gets a dog with the hopes of walking through the park on a summer day and taking them to the backyard barbecues with your family. And for dogs that have reactivity issues, they're having a hard time feeling safe and feeling comfortable. And so they respond by barking, lunging, reacting, growling, um, which is uncomfortable for everybody, embarrassing for the owners, upsetting for the owners, and limits what they can do and what they hoped they could do with their dogs. It's not uncommon for people to think that, oh, this is just how their dog is, their dog's being bad or mean, or really just wants to meet the other dog, is just super friendly. And, and the, the, the fact of the matter is, it is often driven by anxiety, uh, just not knowing what to do in a situation. And the, all behaviors happen because they allow the dog to either get to something they want to get to or get away from something that they want to get away from. And the, the barking, the lunging, all that actually achieves that goal. It's not um, an inherent characteristic of that dog. These are behaviors that serve a purpose of helping that dog feel more comfortable. And that's all that is. That's all we're dealing with. And so what we need to do is figure out how to help that dog feel comfortable using a different skill set. We do see a lot of dogs that have a lot of fear and anxiety who might express it differently than the reactive dogs. Dogs that kind of shut down and withdraw socially. And so we'll have owners with under-socialized dogs or fearful dogs. Behavior is a way of getting needs met for any animal. And animals do behaviors because they work. So if I'm only thinking about punishing and stopping behaviors, I might suppress that behavior that dog's doing right now in this moment because they're afraid of what I'm going to do, but the dog is then in kind of a fear and avoidance mode. Dogs can become more fearful or reactive or aggressive towards things in their environment, and that's really not good for their safety out in the world and how they might respond to other things. The fact is, if you do something unpleasant to, to any animal when they're not feeling safe, that is just going to make it worse. You might suppress the behavior temporarily, but it is gonna come back. You're not solving any problems. So we like to be proactive. We like to, to really help the dog and the owner feel better. So. I certainly think that the biggest misconception about positive training is that people believe it works for training tricks, training cute behaviors, training easy dogs, but it won't work for this particular dog or it's not gonna work for this particular behavior problem. Uh, but the thing is that what we've seen time and time again is that it can be used to change even very challenging, difficult ones. And in fact, it's those challenging, difficult ones like aggression problems where I especially think it's important to use positive methods because of the potential damage you can do. It's also a kinder thing to do. And we have these dogs in our lives to be companions. And so wouldn't it make sense to, to work with them and help solve their problem versus you know, try, just trying to temporarily suppress behavior? Really, an animal that's afraid isn't in a learning place. Uh, they need to start to feel safer about the environment. So a lot of what we do is try to change emotional associations, pair things that are scary right now with pleasurable things so that the dog starts to change their emotional response. When that emotional response changes and they learn they're safe, their owners are gonna make sure they're safe, they have other ways of dealing and coping with stressors, then that reactivity will start to go away. What we're focused on is reinforcing the behaviors we like and managing the environment to prevent the practice of behaviors we don't like. And the reason we do that is it's proactive. So if you are in a model where you're punishing for behavior you don't like, well, that dog has to practice that behavior first. The more a dog practices a problem behavior, the stronger that behavior is. We want to move upstream and focus on what we want them to do instead and preventing the behavior from happening in the first place. When we talk about force-free training, we're really thinking about instead of correcting behavior that we label as wrong or bad, instead rewarding and reinforcing the behaviors that we like instead, the things we want the dog to do more of. And if we do that, we don't have to worry about correcting, stopping, punishing other things. An easy example of that, uh, we're gonna go out for a walk and I'm gonna leash my dog up. 
rather than having my dog leap at the door and bounce around and bark in excitement, I don't need to necessarily get in there and tell them to knock it off and stop it. I can just stop and wait. When my dog sits nicely, allows me to leash him up, then my dog has learned the faster way to get to the thing I want to go do is to sit politely and that behavior gets reinforced. The choice we make with our training methods is important because if I'm going to do something good to the dog, they're going to associate these good things with me. And I become associated with good, positive, fun things. Therefore, our relationship is stronger. We're really focusing on kind of looking for the opportunity just to say yes when the dog's being right and reinforcing those so they become stronger. What I really like to do is set up a way of life for this dog where their decisions matter and when they make good decisions, those pay off for them. People contact us for a variety of reasons to do in-home consulting or training with them, such as barking out the window, vocalizing a lot and getting very over aroused when guests come over, jumping on guests, eliminating in places that are unacceptable inside. And then there's basic cues, sitting, lying down, loose leash walking. We always start with an initial assessment. So we have a 90 minute conversation with the family and we get all family members involved and we talk about their history with their dog and what their goals are and we make observations about how the dog is behaving in our presence and observations about the environment in which the dog is living in. There's all these different pieces you can start to fit together. And once we have a goal then, we come up with a plan. It could be changing associations, it could be teaching new behaviors. It's generally a combination of the two. Often in those early visits, we do a lot of talk about using management to limit how often dogs are practicing the things that are making problems for their owners. But often in the early, stages, there are modifications people can make to their routines, to their home environment, to the things they're doing with the dogs, to start setting them up for more success and limit how much they're seeing these problematic behaviors in the first place. We do offer group classes. Puppy preschool, kind of preparing them for the things that they're going to experience in living in a family, the thing, kind of handling they're going to experience, Things are going to happen at the vet, things are going to happen with grooming, having their toenails trimmed, having people moving about around their food bowls and their toys. And I think of it really as aggression prevention. Providing puppies with the experiences of the things that happen in life with humans and knowing that they're okay and safe. And I really, in a lot of ways, think that's the most important part of the puppy preschool. I want puppies that feel confident in the world and safe because those puppies will be easier to train. Our basic manners classes are focused on teaching some of the traditional behaviors you would think of as far as sitting, lying down, staying, coming when called, walking nicely on leash, greeting people politely. We do also offer a reactive rover class, which is a small group class for owners with dogs that have reactivity issues. And people often worry about how that class is going to work. Uh, but I assure them that it is not just a room full of dogs barking at each other. It's a very controlled environment. We have a maximum of four dogs. Everyone has their own station. We use barriers in earlier weeks, teach the dogs some foundation skills, and eventually move to being able to work with everyone out in the open, passing by each other, seeing the other dogs. My goal is to teach owners more about how dogs learn, how you train any new skill, and I want them to feel that when the class ends after six weeks, they can go forward and any behavior they want to teach the dog, they, kind of, they understand the process. I'd like people to start changing their view of their relationship with not just dogs, but like other, each other, other animals. I feel like I'm, in my, my own way, I'm, I'm making the world a more peaceful, empathetic place, like a dog and a, a family at a time, and that, that is, hugely rewarding. I hope that people and dogs start to understand each other better. I want owners to have a better understanding of what the species is that they've brought into their house and what their needs are and what their normal behaviors are and how they learn and how they communicate. So I want them to be better able to read body language and help their dogs out and recognize if their dogs are stressed or uncomfortable and therefore 
form a better relationship and hopefully help them live in harmony with each other.